the last half hour of the stream, we're doing a sponsored segment for this game, Acolyte of the Altar. This is a deck building roguelite that currently has a playable demo on Steam. If you enjoy this style of game, you want an easy way to support my content, check them out using my link there and wish list the game so you get notified when it comes out. This is the demo that I'm playing here. So if you see what we're doing here and you want to give it a try yourself at home, you can check out the demo for free that they have up. So let's check out what they have going on here, huh? All right, I assume there's a tutorial that teaches us how to play. Let's put my camera here, maybe? Squawking Bard, over here. You're an acolyte, right? I'm a beast. That means we fight. Wonder why? Oh, you look positively flimsy. Let me give you some tips so you don't embarrass yourself. Look at that. You brought a cute little guy with you. Why don't you right click to check him out? It looks like he's a creature. See how he has a yellow attack gem? That's how much damage he deals when he attacks. They have health. The red gem is how much damage they can take before he snuffs it. The blue gem up here is his mana cost. All cards cost mana to play. You can see your mana pool here. It holds your delicious mana. Got it? Have some extra mana I stole from the last Acolyte. Use it to play your mana pool koi next. Spend all remaining mana to get 1-1 one, one for each unspent. He ate your mana. Most cards have special effects, so be sure to read them before playing them. Notice that creatures are something closest to your face. Well, you're out of mana, so let's see what you got. Smack me hard. Drag your creatures into the attack row and then press the big button. <laughs> your creatures are summoning sick. Okay. A little, little magic inspired there. My piercing gaze messed you up good. You see your life go down for my special ability. Deals direct damage. Okay, for real this time, pick up your creatures and drag your mouse to carry multiples at once. Now click the big button to attack. Okay. So turn goes by, a beast rage increases. This unlocks our latent power via new abilities. End your turn so I can show you my real power. That does three. Okay. Powerful slash destroyed your creature. Oh, this does damage to anything. Deal three. This is deal one direct to you. Most abilities strike from left to right, like reading a book. That's all the advice I have. We can stop fighting now, right? your greater patron and your lesser patron ravagers govern a primitive industrial society by physical strength and ferocity with armies of imps captained by mountainous champions they take beasts before they can react bracing reason and shunning our emotional instincts and purest bargain with trans Sentinel Horrors, in addition for knowledge. Locked in the demo, come back later. Let's choose the blue one twice. Choose a gift, become immune for the rest of the enemies. Turn the first time you hit 10 life and again at five life. Turn start, add a temporary swallow to your hand. It reads deal one. If this kills a creature, gain three life. Take some armor. Yeah, the art the art style seems real real good. The cards have a, they all the flavor seems to fit real well. Enchanting cultist. 
Game two, borrowed life. Well, you have borrowed life. It's done to absorb a rather like a temporary shield. Uh, can a mod turn off slow mode for me? Please and thank you, since we're doing not not snap. Print line. You just print line, go to the leftmost position on your board after they're summoned. Oh, so there's a positional element. Interesting. When you loot a new card, a tiny disciple is sadly replaced from your deck. Gain to spend all. Okay, well, this is. Thanks, Silence. So they've got a couple of abilities here. They've got Bite, Ram, and Bite. Deals two. We don't see what that one does yet. Oh, these unlock after there's a certain number of turns, it looks like here. Oh, my front line must be what they attack first. So this this going to the front, it heals. So if it it takes a hit. Okay, yeah, yeah, they're always attacking my first thing. Rams the leftmost creature into the neighbor, damaging each by the other's attack. It's kind of rude. This thops on target creature, raising my stats by theirs. Oh, I wonder if this can attack the turn I play it then, if it's hopping on something else. I'm gonna play this out and then we'll play this next turn and see how it works. Two. Oh, this is telling me how much damage it's gonna take. Got it, it's just gonna ram these into each other. Oh, this can't attack the turn that I play it. Okay, good to know. Oh, I wonder if these always go left to right like that. I assume the mechanics on what the opposing things do will get more involved the deeper we go. It's like our first game where they didn't explicitly tell us how to play. Black Kite, claim your reward. Okay, so we get cards to add to our deck after we do a thing. Floor one of five, okay. Gain a borrowed life, discard a card. Hermit gains bonus effect when played as your only creature. Gain one more. This seems unlikely as a five drop though, right? If you control a legendary creature, destroy an enemy ability. I don't know that we have any legendaries in our deck. We'll find out. This is Acolyte. You can check the pinned pinned comment at the at the top of the chat to check it out on Steam. There's a playable demo that we're currently playing here, so you can grab it and play through it yourself at home. 
You also have an easy way to support my content, add it to your wish list, and you'll also get notified when it fully comes out. So all of these are about to open. There's just one turn on them. Spin, measure, cut. Summon length of thread until your board is full. Kill all length of thread for each one killed. Increase the measure count by one. Deal one for every three measure count. I'm gonna have to see, need to see how this functions here in a second for them to see what this does. Nope, so long as you navigated to the Steam page using my Link 12 ounce skill, it'll all, it'll all, all work itself out. Yep, just use the use the linkage yet there. It's got the source Jeff Oakland on there. Oh, it fills my board. Okay, that makes sense. So this incentivizes me to put a bunch of stuff into play. One for every three tokens I measure. Overkill bloody deals leftover damage. Okay, so I'm gonna put this guy out. I guess that makes sense. There isn't really one of the the asymmetrical dynamic of the gameplay is interesting. Usually when you play a card game or you're battling or something like this, both players are uh, mechanically doing similar things. And here, the way their abilities that we're fighting against work are very different than us drawing cards and playing cards. Uh, Black Kite Games. Uh, one thing that I was gonna tell my manager, but if you're here, I could just tell you directly. Um, Something that you should make sure you do if you're gonna be doing more stream stuff for your game is you wanna add a, a setting in your options to make it so the audio can, keeps playing when the window's out of focus. Because content producers very regularly will be um, like clicking around in the background or stuff or like checking OBS or you got a Discord message or something having the game sound cut out when you do that. Uh, feels bad. I think I want to sit on the mana pool Kai because he soaks everything up. So we'll, we'll wait and play him extra as our only card so he's big. Yes, Netrunner was a game that had the, the asymmetry between how the, the players, uh, how each player won the game. Okay, well, uh, we'll just have these for the next two turns then. Enemy life total is hard to read. Yeah, it's a little bit small. This is this is currently a, a PC primary game first destiny. They're currently on on Steam on PC. Thanks, J Sigs, for checking them out. My deal damage gain that much borrowed life. Play, choose a card in hand. It costs seven mana and becomes a seven seven. Gaining life doesn't seem super useful. We haven't been taking that much damage yet. I'll take the thing that makes a big thing. Smell of rich spices from a roaring campfire. Worshippers gathered around a golden trim throne. I like to eat chip. Jeff, a large man hunches over a thick metal pot. He has two tables 
on either side, piled with ingredients, some familiar and comforting, others curdle the stomach for both appearance and scent. Stew. Find something special. Restore 10 life and gain 3 borrowed life. Destroy his ruins permanently. Restore 6 life. Draw a card. Choose a gift. Grants O1 to neighboring creatures. If it survives to turn five, gain five beetles. You're gonna with seven or more attack, gain three more. Ooh, we we uh we did a thing that gave us a seven seven. Let's do that. Make our, our big things bigger. Uh, I don't think I want to play the mana pull koi on one. I think, I think we're going to save this till turn seven with our, it gets bigger on seven. Okay, parry, counterattack, deal one. If this kills a creature, deal another one as a counterattack. One damage direct to you, restore one life, and then crescendo opens next turn. Okay, piercing gaze hits us. Empower all their abilities, raising their effects by one. I assume the abilities resolve left to right, and that's why this one's over here. So I assume it goes, goes down the line. Oh, when we hit them, then the pair. That's what counterattack means. This kills a creature, deal one is another counterattack. Okay. The more you know. Teddy Driver, thank you for the brand new Prime. Appreciate that. So this is this is gonna build up rather quickly then. Because this is dealing one more to us every turn. This is healing them one more every turn. But I guess it's notable that they only kill my board if. They only kill my board if I'm attacking them. So I can hit them with this and it takes two and then this will heal back next turn. Yes, they're counterattacking for two now and then three. Oh, the crescendo isn't every turn. The crescendo is every three turns it builds up, okay. Okay, that that makes sense. I was like, how do I how do I how do I beat this if it's every turn getting bigger? That makes that makes way more sense. And if I attack with these, I think they counterattack the first one. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna put this on here, here, making its stats bigger. And then we'll end. <laughs> It did, it did scale up in terms of complexity. Choose a card in hand. It costs seven mana and becomes a seven, seven. You. Okay. Oh, and then it gets bigger from the thing. Yep. Okay. And then, and then from here, we're just going to slam down big chunky mana jammas. We do, we do die in four, but I believe we kill them before that. So we get to put this out as a 10 7. Attack with these. It counterattacks my first one for three. We end. Americans are making my own card game. I don't think I would enjoy the aspect of making ev everything from scratch, like rules engine and stuff. But I think. Um, I think like doing like balancing or balance or play testing on something could be it would be something I would enjoy. But as far as like being a full creative style, I don't think that that's something I'd be super into. Okay, yeah. So we got this dead, and we're down to eight this turn. We're gonna close about next turn.
Draw your highest cost creature at cost one less. This will draw us our thing that makes a 7-7, seven, seven, so that sounds great. So, uh, this opponent looks like a real fun guy, chat. Oh, and our health total carries over game to game. That's good to know. It's typical of roguelikes. Flip the health and attack of a creature. You cannot see enemy enemy intense this fight. Oh, that's interesting. Deals two damage. Fungal fury will trigger three times. Oh. Blasting for good. Hey, kill both my things that has hit me too. Oh, it triggers two, two, three times. Got it. This happens every turn, right? So this switches it, and then that murders it. I already have my most expensive card. Uh, I guess I guess I play. I guess I guess I do this. We eat just eat four to six though. Or I guess we take we take the wind up punch too though, right? Life. And the lamb. All right, this changes a card in my hand to be. Seven. I don't know how any of my things ever survive here. Maybe I'm supposed to have saved up to play multiple, multiple things out. I guess, I guess this, oh, this finally happens. Oh, it still needs a valid target. Wait, what? I'd have put that on Tiny Disciple if I'd have realized that's how that was gonna work. But we might be dead because I didn't realize that how it worked. We ended up with a five five for seven. I thought I thought the thing we played previously was gonna change what this was entirely. Yeah, yeah, we're just dead now. I think I think there's a chance we got through this, because the wind-up punch would have slowed down if we'd have had things in play that could survive. But it might have had a 10-7 last turn. Well, no, the, the problem is we're dead to the wind-up punch. The wind-up punch does three. Yeah, if I, we would have, I think we would have won this on two if I would have understood what was going to happen with. I don't, I, I don't fully understand why the 10-7 the didn't work. I guess the, I click card library. The resolution reset when we jump back to the menu, it looks like. So, the one we played said... Choose a card in hand, it becomes... It costs seven mana and becomes a seven seven. Oh, I guess... I guess this keeps all the card text on it, huh? 
Although I guess I don't understand why when we played this without a target, it reverted. I wonder if that's a bug or if that's if that's a feature slash intended. Because this is this is what we had done it on. I hop on target creature and then it, it said we didn't have a target and it turned from the 10-7, the 10-7 back into a 5-5. Five five. I wonder, I wonder if they intend you to be able to play this without a target for it. If you're supposed to have something and then like it freaked out because it was modified. Weird. You're right. It's like a relatively straightforward little game. So people that aren't familiar with uh, deck building roguelites, how it works is we don't, you don't get a chance to retry that. When you're dead, your run is done. And every time you go through, your decks are a little bit different. You have different modifiers. If you want to dork around and see if you could do better than my run, this demo is free to play up on Steam. You can check it out using my link there in the pinned comment. If you want an easy way to support my content, add it to your Steam wish list using my link there. And uh, I am off for the day. I'll be back uh, tomorrow morning is my plan. We're going to be doing a little bit of Diablo 4 to start the day and a bunch of Marvel snap it after. We did all ladder stuff today, dorking around with some ham decks. And I think we'll probably take Spider Ham and Co. on into the... Uh, take Spider Ham and Co. on into the what's it called tomorrow to uh, to check it out. The Conquest Gauntlets.